In this video, we're going to go over the basics of operator overloading in C++. So C++ allows us to redefine how different standard operators work with different types of objects. So let's go over an example. We'll make a basic class called number. And number objects are going to have a single public member variable that's going to be an integer n. We'll make a constructor that will set n. So we'll say int set n and we'll set n equal to set n. Now we can create some number objects. So here we'll say number a is 5 and number b is 10. And then we'd like to be able to say number c is equal to a plus b. This seems like a natural thing given what these numbers are representing, but we can't do this. If we try to save and run this program, we'll get an error here. It'll say invalid operands to binary expression. And basically the plus operator is not defined for number objects, but we can provide a definition of the plus operator for number objects. And that's called operator overloading. So let's do that. Up here, I'll say number operator plus const number and num a. So exactly what the function header is going to look like is going to depend on the operator being overloaded. But in general, we're going to have operator followed by the operator itself, in this case plus. Now in the case of the plus operator, we're expected to return an object of this type. And the function is expected to accept as a parameter a constant reference to an object of this type. So we'll return a number object that has the n member variable of this object added to the n member variable of this object here that was accepted as a parameter. So we'll return number with this number objects, n member variable, added to the parameter member objects, n member variable value. So let's try to use the plus operator with number objects now. We'll save this and run it. And now we just get unused variable C. We don't get an error anymore. Let's try to output C's member variable N. We'll say C out C dot N colon, and we'll output the value of the N member variable of C. And if we save and run this, we should get 15 and we do. So we've successfully added together the n member variables of the object A and the object B when we create the object C by adding together A and B. Just to help us figure out what's going on here, let's actually output the member variable n of this and the member variable n of the num a parameter. So we'll say this arrow n colon, and we'll output this arrow n, and then we'll also say c out num a dot n colon, and we'll output num a dot n as well. Just so we can see what's what here and what's going on when this runs. So we'll save and run this, and now we get this arrow n is 5, num a dot n is 10. So now we can see really what's happening is that when we say a plus b, our special member function for overloading the plus operator is running. And it's going to have this object here, the left operand, be the this object. In other words, the object for which this member function is being called. So the this keyword is going to be a pointer to this object here, the left operand. And then the parameter to that function is going to be the right operand, b, because we can see num a dot n has the value 10, which is our b object in the main function. So we can kind of see what's going on there. Now there's other operators we could overload. Let's do another example. Let's overload the equality operator. So here I'll say bool operator equals equals, and then const number and num a. So this operator returns a bool, which makes sense because the equality operator does that normally. It returns true or false 
whether two things are equal or not. So here we'll say if this n is equal to num a's n member variable, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. So now we can check to see if two number objects are equal. And again, notice how this member function has a very similar style to this one with operator and then the operator here. But the exact function header in terms of return values, for example, is going to be different potentially from one operator to the next. Let's try this out. We'll see if A is equal to C. If it is, we'll output that A is equal to C. Otherwise, we'll output that a doesn't equal c. So a does not equal c. So we'll save and run this. And we get a doesn't equal c. And that makes sense because a's n member variable is set to 5 and c's n member variable we know is set to 15. Let's try two numbers that are equal. We'll say number d 15. And we'll compare d to c using the equality operator. So we'll say if C is equal to D, output C is equal to D. Otherwise, output that C doesn't equal D, followed by an end line. And if we save and run this, we get that C does equal D. Now, one thing with operator overloading is that we generally want to respect the intention of the operator. So for example, with the plus operator here, we could really do whatever we want. So right now we do the sensible thing, which is adding together the two n member variables of our two operands. We could do something that makes no sense at all though. We could just always return a number object, which has its n member variable initialized to zero, regardless of the values of the n member variables of the two operands. Then if we save and run our program, when we add together a and b here, we expect to get back 15, but instead we get back zero. That's a problem because it doesn't really make intuitive sense to the programmer. You would not expect that behavior from a plus operator, which is gonna make the program harder to understand and harder to debug. So try to respect the actual purpose of that operator when doing operator overloading. So that's the basics of operator overloading in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.